few minutes uh, for uh, for a question and uh, as uh, uh, our our discussion needs to be rather constrained in time i i would uh, try to sum up uh, the Uh, so a couple of issues being raised that uh, it was highlighted of course uh, the changes in the industry the role uh, uh, that different uh, players uh, have uh, the assemblers the emerging role possibly uh, of, of new suppliers uh, in terms of innovation model uh, all of these however also require some uh, coordinated action at the system level uh, reference was made uh, to the need uh, for uh, skilling, reskilling, and upskilling, for instance, if you think about reshoring. Another reference was made, I think, by David on uh, the need for infrastructure. When we go towards electric vehicles, it's not just a matter of uh, uh, the producer's investment, but there, of course, there is also a question of uh, uh, investment uh, at the infrastructure level. So if you had to indicate one priority area for policy action to accompany the industry through, uh, of course, uh, the, the COVID crisis, but also favor a long-term change towards more sustainable model, uh, more also socially conscious model, uh, an industry that uh, in may lose uh, jobs in terms of numbers. We heard uh, that uh, it's likely, for instance, that electric vehicles will mean less jobs in the supply chain, but may create jobs uh, with, uh, with another value. So if you had to indicate one priority for national or regional or local policymakers, what it would be? Uh, who would like to, to start? Of course, I, I would kindly ask you to, to keep your response as concise as possible. Sandy. I'll give you a very concise response, and I, I think it is, uh, it's talent development. Uh, you know, preparing uh, the, uh, the workers of our respective nations for uh, the 21st century skills that are going to be needed. Uh, I, I know in our nation, uh, and particularly the region I represent, uh, we, we have much work to do. Thank you. David. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I would I'd stress the need for a kind of participatory approach, both at a national level and a regional level, so that we identify challenges and opportunities and then develop policies and ways to overcome it. That, that just to pick up on the skills issue, you know, there are some countries in, in regions in Europe that are really good at lifelong skilling and reskilling. There are other parts that aren't. We can learn from each other. Um, similarly, in terms of how we bring together these new technologies with sectors, that will vary in different places. So, you know, having a kind of participatory approach at a national and regional level to tackle these issues, I think will be key. Thank you. Uh, Enrico. I agree with the, the, the priority. I think that we should uh, support the reskilling and the upskilling of the of the current uh, uh, em employers, uh, but at the same time, I think that we have to support a strate strategic uh, R&D project uh, to prepare the future. Because I, 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 I repeat, uh, we need in Europe uh, to re recover the gap uh, with the best uh, in the world. In a digitalization we are not the best today i'm speaking not only for the italian regions i think that is a, the current uh, condition in europe we have to speed up the uh, transition to the digitalization world in, in in the eastern in the industry and not only in the public uh, administration or in the in the uh, current in the current uh, environment thank you then uh, yes, uh, I think uh, as Sandy and David uh, mentioned, uh, education is obviously the answer, although it's uh, usually the underestimated answer. I think uh, people talk about it more than they actually uh, do anything about it and invest into it. So I think European money uh, from the funds that will be available should be spent on education, on reskilling, upskilling uh, uh, for sure. 
Uh, but then again, uh, we are not out of the roots uh, uh, when it comes to the economic questions. The cash flow is still an issue, so loan, loan will be an issue. Uh, when it comes to uh, supply chain uh, changes, um, uh, obviously we need to do more on uh, the resilience of the supply chain. That means investment in more digitization uh, and automation of those supply chains. So that's, that's sort of the, the, the short term issues we need to tackle. But long term, uh, in order not to, to stop or hinder the process of uh, uh, better environmental friendly production, uh, the CO2 neutral production we, we discussed, that's, uh, those uh, investments are huge and simply cannot be borne in a due time uh, by simply just the companies, not uh, when it comes all through the uh, supply chain. Obviously, the larger ones, the, the OEMs and tier ones, uh, sometimes can, can bear those, but obviously the tier two and other tier levels uh, will be not available to, uh, will not have available funds to do it. So a European funding for sure has to go in that direction uh, stronger and definitely. Thank you. I think Mehdi and Barbara are still with us if you want to, to give your priority. Sure. I, I can only repeat what the others have said. It's skills, skills and skills. Um, mostly, um, well, those replacing IC technology with more electric uh, engine that does require some different skills. Yes, it requires fewer people. What we do need more of is software engineers, programmers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because as many others mentioned, uh, digital aspects of a car mm -hmm. are becoming more and more important. Thank you. Mehdi, your concluding yeah. words. Thank you. While I completely agree with what was said, I'm going to say another thing. <laughs> to point out another priority is, I think also, be it at national, regional, or even local uh, uh, level, there will be a need also, I think, to encourage investment in all the battery value chain. When I say battery, I'm not talking only about battery cells and battery packs, but all the components. Also, I think David mentioned the issue of refining of the, the material. We have the, the chance in Europe to have also some lithium and some quantity as well of cobalt. So we can do things, uh, we have to do things with batteries and not only the battery packs and the battery cells, and because at the end of the day, we have to keep in mind that um, uh, battery is going to be the core of the car, the new strategic part of the car. So without a battery and the battery industry that is integrated with the automotive industry, uh, we will have uh, no comparative uh, cost advantage, especially with uh, the Chinese competitors. And, and some of the Chinese competitors, I think, uh, can't remember who mentioned BYD. They used to be battery manufacturer for the consumer electric in industry at the beginning. So I think it's it's also important to have a focus on, on batteries. Thank you. 